WMC Memphis, WMFS FM HD2 Bartlett Memphis. It's America's team. The Dallas Cowboys play here on ESPN 790 AM. Watch the sun rise, new days dawning, and it's calling you and me. Where the mighty Mississippi flows by Memphis, Tennessee. We've got woodlands, fields, and water. Hey, there is no better way. You can find a friend, but don't delay. Listen up and learn about it all. Outdoors with Larry Ray. Listen up and learn about it all. Outdoors with Larry Ray. Good Saturday morning. Welcome to another edition of the award-winning Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Sportsman's Warehouse, and Barton Power Sports. Now, here's your host, Larry Ray. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on this uh, September the 17th, which means third Saturday, which means Frank Barton is in the studio. And uh, Frank, we kind of gave you a little break on that last one talking about uh, crappie fishing, but I, I know that uh, you, you love to eat crappie. That's you sure. bet. Yeah, and it was a fun segment. Ron Wong has stuck around uh, uh, with us also. Ron is, will be down there at the Crappie Masters National Tournament uh, October the, the see, September the 28th through October the 1st, but uh, we're going to switch gears now. and uh, It's about time. It's about time. Ron, I know Ron can sit back and listen because he – he loves when the hunters are off the water, so Love to speak. It. And uh, Frank, uh, is, of course, uh, he's he loves to duck hunt, and I'm fortunate to go with Frank sometimes. But uh, this is going to start something new today, uh, third Saturday of each month. In, at, at this 7 o'clock hour, we're going to hook up with our good friends at Drake Waterfowl down in Olive Branch and uh, Tate Woods and Martin Risner and all the guys down there. We're going to talk a little waterfowl hunting on the third Saturday of each month, and uh, we're starting off with a guy that uh, I think he likes waterfowl hunting. I, I know that uh, I've watched him win one of his three world championship duck calling contests, which, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, and you'll have to answer this, Barney Clay. Uh, Barney, I, did you not win one in each decade? I did, yes, sir. Uh, did, did you plan it that way? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. To be honest, I wanted to win three straight, but there was a ten-year gap in there. <laughs> wow. Well, that's pretty amazing. The, a three-time winner, and and Barney, of course, uh, you 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 folks out there know him as uh, as one of, as the host for Drake's uh, Migration Nation on Sportsman's Channel. As I said, a three-time uh, world championship uh, duck calling. Uh, which is amazing for anybody to, even if you can win it once, that's that's one of the amazing things to be, be able to go back and win it uh, three times in three different decades. And you know, in the seventy-nine year history for three wins, that's pretty impressive. So, Barney, I talk about your relationship to Drake. You know, I, I like telling this story because. Essentially, Tate and Bobby turned into great friends. Uh-huh. But I did a a uh, promotion down in Oxford, Mississippi, yeah, uh, years ago, and I met a fellow named Tate Wood, and uh-huh. he was there with his new line of clothing. And I looked it over and just fell in love with it, and struck up a conversation with Tate. And he said, "Man, if we could ever get you wearing my clothing, it'd be on, an honor." And as soon as I was available, uh, you know, with with contracts and whatnot, I called Tate up, and I've been a Drake guy ever since. A Drake guy, and of course, that's right out of Olive Branch, Mississippi. And uh, once again, we're going to be featuring Drake uh, on the third Saturday of each month. And 
Let's talk a little bit, Barney, on, on know what a career you've had. And a lot of folks uh, say, well, what's the what's the, the pressure on that stage at Stuttgart? <laughs> uh, immense, I guess would be the best term. I, uh, I was noted to be calm and collected on stage. People thought I was a statue when I blew my routine. Huh. But trust me, inside, everything was shaken. Yes. I know there's been times when that's. Back in the day, you stood behind a little rice blind, uh-huh. and I'll guarantee you, I had some of that rice shaking off there. <laughs> I can imagine it, it, that third time, it, in the year two thousand. Let's talk about that because uh, you knew that you had a chance if you won. Three would be only the, if I'm not mistaken, only uh, six other men have ever won three championships in the history of that thing. What That's was the, what was the difference between that first time when you're a young whippersnapper and that last time? <clears throat> well, quite honestly, the first one was enough of a surprise uh. that I didn't thoroughly enjoy it. I didn't take it all in. Uh-huh. And what's really bad about it is I ended up getting food poisoning really? right after the contest. So I couldn't even leave and head home the next day. Are you serious? No. Yeah. So how, yeah. Old, how old were you when you won that first one? Oh, geez. Uh, I was 89. I was uh, 40. 40 years old. Okay. And then you got sick. And then uh, you know what? Hey, I, I, I take that back. My math, my math is horrible. I was thirty years old. I thought you had to be younger than that, but I agree with you. If you want to be forty, that's okay with me. You know, <laughs> no, so no, this one was fast enough as it is. No, no, no. So so you're age thirty, and you get sick, and you win. And that everybody tells me that's kind of a, a you know you just take it in. But the third time, uh, you know, we got a good friend here in Memphis called Buck Gardner that. Yep. Uh, that I know Buck real well, and Buck talks about, you know, he, he took him like 10 years to ever win or maybe, the, you know, and then he won back-to-back and things along that line. And 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 you have been there, Frank. You you have seen the event itself. It's something to see, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I, I get speechless when I think about the, the you know, the world, you know, the World Duck Collin Championships and the, and the people around here in the Mid-South area that I know yeah. that have, participated and know that have won yes um uh, and uh to think to win it three times i can't imagine it three times well i, I mean I, and i know that and, and barney what's the so i know you're a duck hunter so there's a, a lot of folks ask or what's the difference between on the stage and in the blind i'm gonna be dead honest uh I'm a Yankee, so the ducks up here aren't quite as <laughs> fine-tuned, we'll say, as down there. Uh-huh. So I literally use every sound I use on the contest stage in the field. Do you really? Absolutely. Now, that said, I'm not out there blowing 90-second routines when I'm calling ducks. But, yes. Um, you know, with the advent of spinning wing decoys, I don't use that scream and hail call as much as I used to. Uh-huh. But still, I do it often enough that it still works. Well, uh, and I know that... Uh... Let's talk a little bit about uh, about the, the Drake's Migration Nation on the Sportsman's Channel. Uh, that's something I know you got to be proud of because you guys really do a great job. I appreciate that. I I really like the new format when they went to the regional yes host uh-huh. uh, deal because it's a real cool mix uh, of styles, species, personalities. Certainly, there are some real characters, especially going to be on. On this next season. So, oh, now watch uh, it. I love now. it. It's just fun. I love making good TV. And and you said real characters. What do you mean by that? Um. <laughs> well, how about we say quirky? Quirky. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, there's no doubt that the guys that you're going to see on season eight. Yeah. Um, are absolutely having fun. They are, and and, and don't you need to be that in, in this day and time? I know. You know, I'm 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 a, an old folky type guy, but I can remember when the show started and they were all just kind. Of, I'm not talking about this, but back in the 20 years ago when some of these things started, I think we got to be entertaining, don't we? Entertained and educated. Educated. Don't, they don't realize that the viewer doesn't, but they love to learn things as well as be entertained. And the main thing that you just said E and E is what I've always said: entertaining and education. If you absolutely, if you can't do that, so. Your part in the show, how would you describe your role? Uh, my role is regional host as far as content, and I'm also the host uh, 
for introducing each show, introducing the members, you know, things like that. It's, how, how, it's a pretty simple job. Yeah, but how do y'all come up with uh, what you're going to do? Um, everybody turns in a schedule, uh-huh. uh, a hunt schedule. And uh, matter of fact, we just did that. I think they're finalized now. Yeah. And they schedule cameramen, and you go out and hunt for three or four days, and hopefully get a TV show put together. Hey, you just said the magic word there, Barney. You said hopefully. This this is not as easy as it looks, right? <laughs> <laughs> duck hunting can be really tough, as you well know. Yeah. Making right a, for- <laughs> making a TV show about duck hunting can be even tougher, certainly. Frank, you know we we need to take a video with us when we go hunting. You know, just to. Uh, Make well, sure. What are you? Maybe not. No, I was, you know, you saw my, my head jerk around when you said real characters on the show. And uh, I just knew the name J. Paul Jackson was going to get flying and get thrown out there in a moment. Was that Barney? Did you hear him? I did not. Uh, uh, it's J, all right. J, 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 J. Paul Jackson. J. Paul Jackson. Do you know him? I do know him. I hunted with him uh, <laughs> several years ago. Well, he, he redefines the word character yeah see that's, <laughs> see that's what frank was thinking about you know he's he's thinking about all the characters out there i'm thinking of words character like that man has a lot of character or that man is a character there's two different ways you can describe this you know when it comes down to it but barney so i know uh we got a couple of minutes here left and we appreciate you doing it uh, give us the uh, give us the uh, take on what you think the season's going to be as i say every year <laughs> we've got the ducks if we can get the weather, it'll be phenomenal. Well, who's got the ducks? You got the ducks up there. Would you send them down here, please? No, they got to get here first, then I'll gladly pass them on down. <laughs> oh, now he's saying it's northern up that. And I always heard that you guys had the ducks, and we never got the ducks down here. You know, you guys get them, but it certainly takes a lot of winter weather. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, I remember back in the day, up here around Halloween, you could get up in the morning. And if you went outside and you had a good coating of frost and the stars were out, yeah. you were going to go out and whack mallards. Now it seems like you got to have snow and ice and temperatures down in you know in the single digits and yeah, that's I mean that's brutal conditions, honestly. Really, for you? I mean, uh, what do you think it is for us down here? You know, I mean, <laughs> that's a good point. Man. That's a very good point. Hey, Barney, thank you for being on Outdoors with Larry Ray and. Uh, Look forward to talking to you maybe through the season and then uh, as we give our Drake Association here. So uh, hope you have a great season, and we'll, we'll stay in contact. Okay, buddy? Thanks, Larry. All right. Let's take a break on Outdoors with Larry Ray and come right back and talk to probably our all-time favorite guest on Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. You can find out. 